Welcome back to Strong's Garage. Yeah, you got Matt and Jim here. We're here again. It's been a little while between the last video again. Yeah, we're saying it's one of those days, one of those weeks, just turned into one of those yeah. existences. So. Yeah, so far, so far, so long, yeah. Yeah. But uh, we figured, let's do another video. Yeah, right. Use some old tools, fixing a Model T. Yeah, exactly. Get kind of the, the, kind of the vibe right now. Yeah, yeah, or what the latest buzz will be. Yeah, we've actually finished this Model T nearly, which we've been working on for quite some time, which was a complete engine, transmission, rear end rebuild, kingpins. Like we yeah, did the whole drivetrain, yeah. Whole chassis completely redone. So. Very cool. And so now we can do a Ford style merger of the body and uh, yeah. running gear. Hopefully, uh, send that and he can get that done. Be driving it uh, next year. Well, we'll be able to sell the snow chains if anything. Yeah, we're closing in on <laughs> wintertime, so. But uh, thanks to the patrons, yeah, we had one uh, awesome. stop by. That was wonderful. Ben, yeah, thanks for coming by. Well, what we're going to do today is yeah. show you how to set up a third brush generator. Exactly. And yeah, it's uh, something that perplexes many, but it's uh, quite fairly simple. simple. Yeah. yeah. And with some really cool uh, machinery along the way. So come along in the garage and we'll get you set in that third brush generator. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll be setting your third brush in no time. Yeah. We've gone through and checked all the internals of this and it's fine. So all we're going to do today is do the final adjustment on the third brush to the driving style of the owner. Yeah. And then we'll test it on our machine and just make sure that everything is Run it up and, yeah, perfect before we, we put we it on. Yeah. Okay, here's the generator. Just have a yeah. quick look at the innards. Up. You can see that uh, this is the third brush. It's the smaller one. There's two that are larger. And so odd man out. Get in here, and they suggest you just pull your spring, push it off to the side, and you take your little hook, and you just lift your third brush up so it's not making contact with the world. And so the procedure on this here is we loosen these four bolts, or screws, I guess, at the back here, slightly, or it will uh, fall off. We don't need that again. No, 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 we don't need that. Which allows your uh, third brush to float. And so now in its floating position here, you apply power to it and uh, it'll spin it like a motor. And so by shifting your third brush, it'll uh, kind of spin one way or the other. And uh, you want it to kind of stop, but want to turn clockwise looking at it. Power away. We'll do our positive ground. This probably also helps polarize the unit. Put that on there. Touch it here. Oh. So it's wanting to move clockwise. You slide it down a bit. Nothing. Up a bit. Okay. So it's turning clockwise. So we want to bring it down just till it wants to turn clockwise. Right about, right about there. there. Yep. Perfect. And so now that's kind of our uh, our baseline set. And uh, now we'll take it over to the machine, you spin it up, and that's where you set your uh, amperage coming out of it. Okay. So. Thanks, Jim. We'll reconvene on the machine. Okay. Well, uh, the machine we're going to be using here is uh, a Hobart Brothers error, as we showed you. And uh, it's kind of neat. We have this old book here, T.H. Peacock, The Parts House from 1929. And he was an automotive parts supplier in uh, Calgary, Edmonton, which is close to us, and Lethbridge. So Alberta stuff from 29, neat old thing. But if we uh, open it up, we can uh, find ourselves a little bit of information on that, that their Hobart Brothers yeah, testing. Yeah, the old testing machine here. So there's the, uh, the machine. You've seen it. Yeah. It's the Hobart Brothers test bench. Yeah, exactly. A rugged ball bearing, reversible variable speed motor. Okay, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, silent self-aligning coupling. There we go. Yeah, it's got that universal vice. Yeah. Improved tumbler with uh, switches, improved circuit control jacks, test sockets, adjustable spark gap. Oh, yeah, because it says magneto tester. You can spin up generators. You can spin yeah. up distributors. This thing is really if cutting edge. it spins, edge. you can clamp it down. Yeah, That's yeah. And spin it. It's $8,100 in today's money, so it's a pretty substantial tester, really. Oh, certainly. Yeah. But uh, by today's account, if we bought that machine with that quality, it'd be about eight hundred thousand, assuming. Right? Oh, to, yeah. solid cast iron, bakelite, and copper. What yeah. dreams are made of, really, when it comes oh, to electronics. Exactly. Anyways, uh, there's a little bit of interesting literature on the machine, so let's go use it. Yeah. Like we said in the book, this is super rare. We got this at a farm auction about thirty miles from here. 
I mean, it's such a neat machine. We rewired it, but um, remarkably well preserved for being uh, 95 years old. Yeah, right. And it does the job today. So the T generator, as you saw, has a gear on the front. And instead of a, a, a nut, like on a regular generator or alternator. Yeah, with a pulley. And yeah. So there's several it's different... it's not even, uh, like you say, bolted on. It's pressed on. It's pressed so. on, yeah. So there's this pin drive thing that goes in. It drives on two pins in here, right in this yeah. thing here. So what happens is, that's what drives it. This, we got different ones that have a slot or whatever to run a magneto. Yeah. Starter. Um, got different sockets that go on the end of it to run the starter based on the end of the socket size. But like I said, the Model T, no such luck. Gear. So I got uh, my dad, who's a machinist, um, came up with this uh, brainwave. We were trying to figure out a way to, to grab onto the gear without having to fool around too much. He uh, used a boat roller, a rubber boat roller, <laughs> and machined it out to uh, a press fit, sort of, and then machined this out and pressed in a socket. So now we have our neoprene antique yeah. 1928 Model T uh, yeah. adapter. So Gear thanks to my adapter. dad for that. He does quite a bit of the yeah. machining Saves around here. the day again. Yeah. So we're going to just show you how this sucker works. Okay, Jim, throw the generator on. All right. Perfect. That spins nice. What we'll do is we'll just engage our third brush again. It's time for him to get back on the job. And nice thing about this is that it's uh, got its integral, integral gauges. So this gauge here is fed down and we rewired it to this beautiful water slide here that says amps. All the electrically minded folks here know that for an amp gauge, the most direct ones, they have to be in the part of the circuit. So uh, we'll wire it accordingly here so we've got with the, a draw yeah with uh unfortunately we don't have a a, a carbon pile or adjustable uh load but we do have a, a good used headlight bulb which will provide a, enough load here for us and so yeah so our uh, positive here and go to our ground it goes into our bulb here and then coming out of the bulb it goes to this here we know that it spins clockwise looking at it so here's the exciting part about this all right there's a draw there's a draw we can vary our speed here a bit there it is we do our setting to eight to ten amps so eight it is but now we've got to retighten the brush plate yeah, and uh, away we go. It's powering. Yeah, it's generating. So, actually, there's our amps. Unfortunately, our volt gauge has decided to quit bolting. So, but we're making about eight amps which is what we want at 1000 rpm uh, we have this in place of our uh, uh yeah, slightly i don't know if it's newer voltmeter but uh more functional one gee that's hard to read jim it's well here how about we just double the scale well there we go so it's saying about uh 16 15 volts so seven and a half volts seven and a half volts at 1000 rpm i'd say that's just bang on perfect That'll charge a six volt battery like nobody's business. Yeah. So we we'll shut her down here. Then another quick little explanation. You might be wondering, well, what is a cutout switch? And so when uh, the car starts up, the generator starts spinning and it energizes. And uh, through the magic of electricity, it closes these points, which connects your battery to the output of your generator. And as the engine shuts off, it pulls or it comes right down and the excitement goes down on this side here and that uh, disconnects. Would you say it uh, cuts it out? Yeah, it cuts it out of the circuit. Yeah. And so if you're real and electrical cutout buff, the uh, voltage regulator has two other coils in it, but one of them is a cutout, so they never went away from it. Yeah, and, uh, in, our, and in modern days, if you want away from that, all you need is a diode. 
Well, now the generator is tested and adjusted. On the car it goes. Thanks for watching, folks. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed a little divulge into the third brush. Yeah, the old third brush, the inner sanctum of the yeah. third brush. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not that. Uh, it's actually pretty ingenious. Oh, it is. And yeah, no, it's. Uh, next week, maybe or next time, we'll uh, get that thing running for the first you time. You betcha. So stick around. Uh, check the next video out. Yeah. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, like, share, do all that. And thanks again to the patrons. And uh, tune in next time for Strong's Garage.